You are merciful to all, O Lord, and despise nothing that you have made. You overlook people's sins to bring them to repentance, and you spare them, for you are the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, we begin our journey of Lent. We begin to walk the way with Christ Jesus to Jerusalem, to Calvary. And we prepare ourselves to follow him to the tomb and to Easter. Coming before God our Father this day, let us then place this time into his hands. That he may guide us and help us grow in our faith and in our adherence to him. And may this Lent bring us to that joyful Easter tide and help us to revel in Christ's love for us. So let us pray. <clears throat> Grant, O Lord, that we may begin with holy fasting this campaign of Christian service, so that as we take up battle against spiritual evils, we may be armed with weapons of self-restraint. We make our prayer for our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. reading from the prophet Joel. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Who knows whether the Lord will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him a grain offering and a drink offering to be presented to the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, call the solemn assembly, gather the people, sanctify the congregation, assemble the aged, gather the children, even infants at the breast. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her canopy. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, weep. Let them say, Spare your people, O Lord, and do not make your heritage a mockery, a byword among the nations. Why should it be said among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The response, be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. For I know my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Restore me to the joy of your salvation, and sustain me in a willing will Stain in me a willing spirit. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall declare your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. A reading from the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians. We are ambassadors for Christ, since God making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake, God made Christ to be sin who knew no sin, so that in Christ we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For the Lord says, At an, an, an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. 
Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. If today you hear God's voice, harden not your hearts. Praise to you, O Christ, King of eternal glory. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the disciples, Beware of practising your piety before others in order to be seen by them. For then you have no reward from your Father in heaven. So whenever you give alms, do not sound a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets, so that they may be praised by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your alms may be done in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners, so that they may be seen by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But whenever you pray, go into your room and shut the door, and pray to your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. And whenever you fast, do not look dismal like the hypocrites, for they disfigure their faces so as to show others that they are fasting. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward. But when you fast, put oil on your head and wash your face, so that your fasting may be seen not by others, but by your Father who is in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will reward you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Would you be seated? Lent always throws up those little challenges as uh, I sit down to, to get things ready and looking at the liturgies and so forth. Um, even just then, you know, I, suddenly the announcement of the gospel is different, isn't it? And you go, hang on, is this the gospel? It's not using the A word. I'm not going to use the A word until I get to Easter. We replace that, we save that for a nice time. So all things like that, is he started yet? Yeah, I know I'm doing that. Get up! You know, it's, there's, there's lots of things that this time of year remind us that we are part of a cycle, um, a cycle of uh, liturgy and cycle of um, examining our relationship with God. Just the other day, as I was uh, bringing up the, the, the liturgy from last year, and uh, hope maybe I won't get into too many secrets now. Well, it's pretty obvious, really. When I'm looking at this year's services, I look at last year's to see what we did. Um, and all the sheets and all the booklets online. As I brought up last week, last year's Lenten booklet, there on the front page, on the front of it was Pray For You Pray. And it started to make me think. Really started to make me think. And it starts to make you think about what has happened over the past year. I think for us as Christians, Lent is a time of thinking and reflection. Probably much more than Christmas. Christmas is all a panic about getting it right and doing the right thing and getting the turkeys in before they run out in the shop. You know, it's that kind of thing. But with Lent, it is a time of looking back at, at the way that our lives have been and seeing that we can learn from them and look forward to the way that our life can be with, with our relationship with God made better. So to look back at what we did last year, and then I got interested and started to look back the year before that. We didn't do anything. We weren't allowed, really. And then the year before that and so forth. And then to look back into 2018, 17, 16, I wasn't there all day. And it took a minute or two. Um, to see how our prayers have changed and the world around us um, has moved and changed. What was in our concerns year by year? Last year, it was, of course, the beginning of the conflict in Ukraine that we were sh shocked about. And now we have other things to pray for as well, sadly, as the conflict in Ukraine. The two parts of Lent, though, uh, there are two parts of Lent which come into play when it's that period of reflection, when it's at that period of looking back, learning and moving forward. Lent comes in two ways for us. It comes in the personal and it comes in the corporate, that is, together with our brothers and sisters. 
And this today is reflected in the readings which we have. Firstly, we have from the prophet Joel, where the whole people of Israel have gone astray. They've been up to their shenanigans again and turning their backs on God. And when they turn their backs on God, then uh, foreign invaders come in and, and uh, run over them. Uh, and eventually they're able to get their freedom again and they give thanks to God for um, uh, him liberating them from their oppressors. And here in Joel, we have this moment when the people of God uh, feel abandoned because collectively they lost their faith in him or they've tried other stuff out. And Joel comes along and says, even now, he sa says the Lord, even now when you are completely down and feel that you have no way forward as the people of God, return to me with all your heart. We have in Joel a call to the whole people of God to come back to him as one. It's important today that when uh, we, we come together and the ash, which is a symbol uh, that I mentioned a moment, is placed upon your head. It is not placed upon just you personally. It's placed upon you as part of the body of Christ throughout the world. There will be people in every continent, in every country, speaking every tongue, in every culture, who are turning to God this very day and will be marked with the sign of the cross in ash this very day, along with you. Along with you. And today, we are reminded that we are part of the body of Christ. We are part of the chosen people who, yes, are capable of falling away from God, but are still called back to God because he's a God of love, a God of forgiveness, a God of repentance. Verse 17 is very interesting. It said, it says, why should it be said among the peoples, where is their God? And you've got to watch the news and see what the world thinks about the church. They're still asking that question now. Where is he? He's with us and is with anyone who gives God a go. So, as we enter a period of Lent, we enter it collectively with all of our brothers and sisters. And we pray for our church, and we think about the world in which we live, and about how we represent Christ's love in the world, in, in a world which is often so torn apart by torment and hatred. But then the other side of Lent, which we heard, which you hear about in the Gospel today of Matthew, is a complete contrast in a way. When you pray, go into your quiet room where no one else knows what you're doing. When you give alms, go into your quiet place where no one else knows what you're doing. When you fast, don't let anyone else know what you're doing. There's a personal side in Matthew's Gospel to this period of preparation. Not just look, be part of the people, but also yourself. Spending this time looking back over the last year and seeing where you personally have had your relationship with God grow or sometimes diminish. I'll be honest with you, sometimes I'll go, where are you, mate? There are moments, sometimes longer moments, sometimes shorter moments. And there are moments in our lives when we felt the presence of God absolutely sweeping through everything and be so confident that we feel that if he wished us to, we could move a mountain. So that inward, personal side of Lent, where we can examine ourselves, look back for the year's anniversary of Ukraine, what has happened with us within that year? How have we found our relationship with God? Where have we seen his blessings amongst those people who we've met and the experiences we've had and where have we felt ourselves failing and falling away from his call. And so as we approach this time, it is collectively together and on our own individual examination that we come here and place our trust afresh before God, afresh before Christ Jesus who we hope and pray will lead us triumphantly through the cross. 
The ash in a moment is from the palm crosses. I had a few of them there. The kitchen stinks as always every year when I cook them up. Oh, never mind. Uh, and uh, add to the ashes that are there. The ashes remind us of a new beginning, a new, it reminds us of what we come from physically, what the world comes from physically, carbon, and to where we go. But it reminds us that we are part of God's creation. The ash of the physical world combined with the water of Christ's baptism for us, of our being drawn into his life, brings literally new life into the world. You are the life of Christ in our world. And the ash reminds us that both together, because you'll all be marked, and on yourself, because you are marked, that this is a time to reflect and a time to look forward. And so we begin our journey of Lent once more. We begin our journey towards Jerusalem. Let us pray then that during this time, we may have confidence and wisdom to turn to God, to trust in him afresh with our brothers and sisters and to grow and to come to Easter as the better people that he wants us to be. Would you stand, please? Dear brothers and sisters, let us harshly, humbly ask God our Father that he be pleased to bless with the abundance of his grace these ashes which we will put on our heads in penitence. God will move by acts of humility and respond with forgiveness to works of penance. Lend your merciful ear to our prayers and in your kindness pour out the grace of your blessing on your servants who are marked with these ashes that, as they follow the Lenten observances, they may be worthy to come with minds made pure to celebrate the Paschal mystery of your Son. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Let us change our garments to sackcloth and ashes. Let us fast and weep before the Lord, that our God, rich in mercy, might forgive us our sins. Let the priests, the ministers of the Lord, stand between the porch and the altar and weep and cry out. Spare, O Lord, your people. Do not close the mouths of those who sing your praise, O Lord. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will for ever and ever. <coughs> Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. my dear brothers and sisters in Christ, that this my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and for the good of all his church. May the sacrament... As we solemnly offer the annual sacrifice for the beginning of Lent, we entreat you, O Lord, that through works of penance and charity, we may turn away from harmful pleasures and cleanse from our sins, may become worthy to celebrate devoutly the passion of your Son, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. We stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you will that our self-denial should give us humble, give you thanks and humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels, as with one voice of praise we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offering, and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we were once lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth, to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which will be given up for you.
a similar way when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross. He took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, once more giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead and look forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, the sacrificial victim who recon reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, and those who unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion with mind, of mind and heart, together with Paul, Robert, James, our bishops, help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom, until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the Blessed Apostles, Bartholomew, Mark, and Mary of the Cross, and with all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, that we humbly commend to your mercy. Then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours for ever and ever. Amen. our Saviour's taught us, so we have the confidence to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. <coughs> Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy. Lamb <coughs> of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
pour out a spirit of compunction, O God, on those who bow before you, your majesty. And by your mercy, may they merit the rewards you promised to those who do penance. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Christ grant you holiness to deny yourselves, take up your cross, and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God.